For two millennia, the Olmec civilization lay forgotten beneath the jungles of Veracruz and the ruins of subsequent Mesoamerican cities. But in 1867, all that changed, which is why I'm able to be here and teach to you today in Bumblebee's video all about the top 10 epic gods from ancient Olmec mythology. Before we get into it, this is an old MF in society. So for number 10, let's learn about the Olmecs. As stated, it was in 1867 when Jose Melgar Estarano reported the existence of an enormous basalt head in the village of Tres Zapotes. Further search and excavation found not only one, but dozens, and then ruins, and then a lost civilization. Turns out the Olmec were the first major civilization in Mexico, appearing around 1600 BCE and residing in what's now the states of Veracruz and Tabasco. Being among the first civilizations in the region, they naturally led the foundations for the culture and mythologies that followed, such as the famed Mesoamerican ball game, a popular sport in pre-Columbian Americas, played with balls made of solid rubber that could literally blunt in your head in. But they also introduced ritual bloodletting, human sacrifice, consumption of chocolate and cacao, and dance ritual. They invented a writing system that the Mayans later adopted. This, however, cannot be proved unlike the Maya and the Aztec, aka Mexica mythologies, as there's no evidence of any surviving written records which can confirm these findings. In fact, there's barely any surviving anything thanks to the lack of archaeological evidence. We don't even know what the Olmecs called themselves. We only know the Mexica word for them, which it literally meant rubber people. And while there are no written records of the Olmec conference, beliefs, or customs from the archaeological evidence, it appears they were not economically confined. One thing they did codify and record, however, was their mythology using a system of symbols and drawings. There are indications of ritual sacrifice, cave-based rituals, pilgrimages, offerings to gods, but what can I tell you about their godly pantheon? Well, that's number nine on the countdown, Olmec pantheon, what we know. Specifics concerning the Olmec religion are a matter of some conjecture. We don't have the exact names of the gods in Olmec mythology, so in modern times, archaeologists and researchers have simply numbered them or dubbed them based off of appearance, as you'll soon learn. Most of the gods were associated with natural phenomena like the earth, sun, wind, etc., with special affiliation for apex predators. Early researchers sniffed out that the Olmec religious beliefs were seemingly centered upon a jaguar god. This view was challenged in the 1970s, and a subsequent article presented what's now considered to be the eight different supernaturals of the Olmecs. The names and identities of these supernaturals are only provisional, and the actual tales, purposes, and explanations of the deities are unknown. The confusion stems in part because the supernaturals are defined as a cluster of iconographic motifs, meaning that any motif may appear in multiple supernaturals. For example, flame eyebrows are often seen in the Olmec dragon and the bird monster, and the cleft head is seen on almost all the supernaturals. For now, there's little researchers, historians, and archaeologists alike can do expect, speculate, or wonder with what little information we do have. And now I'm going to share it with you, so you may do the same. The first of the eight gods you'll learn about naturally is number eight, the Olmec dragon. Depicted as a crocodile-like being with occasional human eagle or jaguar features, the mouth of this ferocious beast is sometimes open in an ancient carved image and representing a cave, which historians believe inspired the Olmec cave paintings, making them potentially holy. Inside its cavernous mouth, pun intended, was a long forked tongue, and above it, a weirdly bulging nose and prominent tusks. The Olmec civilization considered the dragon to be one of the primary gods, a representation of Earth itself, or at least the very human plane. As a result, the once great Olmec dragon was a deity representing agriculture, fertility, prosperity, fire, and the supernatural essence that be. Naturally, the Olmec would come to believe that the lives of the people on Earth depended on this dragon being happy. The Olmec dragon was a predecessor of many Mexica deities, including Sipactili, Huehuateotel, Quetzalcoatl, and also the Mayan god Itzamna. God number seven will be the maize god, because who doesn't love corn? Well, corn's ugly, gritty cousin, maize, which was a massive staple of Mesa American diets, from the Olmecs right to the Inca, the Maya, and the Mexica. The plant could be food, but it could also be used for arts, weaving, even hair care and skin care. Anyways, because maize was such an important staple of life to the Olmec, it's not surprising that they dedicated a god to its production. The maize god appears as a humanish figure with a stalk of corn growing right out the top of his head, just whoop, bean sprouting it. Like the bird monster, another god you'll learn about, the maize god's symbolism frequently appears in depictions of its rulers. This could reflect the ruler's responsibility to ensure ensure bountiful crops for the people, his role in delegating agriculture jobs and land, it could be protecting the cropland and being one spiritually with said land. We got options, you know? A carved salt found in Veracruz shows a representation of the maize god growing corn from his cleft, and it also shows this god with the snarling face associated with the were jaguar you'll learn about. However, a feature unique to the maize god is that he's rarely shown with a full body. Alrighty, so god number six is, as mentioned, the bird monster. Very sorry for how short this explanation will be, as this god is the least common 
commonly depicted, let alone explained, out of the pantheon. Now, evidently, this god represented the skies, breathing, and air, but also rulership and shocker, agriculture. This fearsome bird was often depicted to have reptilian features on the body of a harpy, a type of bird the Olmecs may have hunted or alternatively revered. When you put a deity's face on an animal, it can really go either way. Seeing as it was the preferred god of the ruling class, I'm leaning more towards harpy having cultural significance. Carved likenesses of rulers are sometimes shown with the bird monster symbol on their garb. The city once located in La Veneta archaeology site venerated the bird monster as its image appears there frequently, including on an important altar. Up next in our deity countdown is the fish monster, who's god number five. This lovely guy is also called the shark monster and is believed to represent the underworld. Its visage has a crescent-shaped eye, small lower jaw, rowed with shark teeth. In other forms, the fish monster also will have a dorsal fin, a split tail, and crossed bands. It's believed that the shark monster was the patron god of a small section of, of Olmec people who were fishermen. While the role of the shark monster isn't really clear, its importance in the godly pantheon is. It's the main character of the Olmec creation story, whose body became the earth that we reside on. It's also not an overshoot for researchers to believe that the shark monster is the Olmec version of Sipak Tili, a Mexica god because it's the only water-based character in Olmec mythology. The presence of shark teeth in excavation indicates that the shark monster was part of Olmec rituals, although the depiction of the fish monster has been featured in various forms of art. Deity number four will be the water god. You'd think that'd be the fish, but nope, it is a chubby dwarf with an ugly ass mug. The water god often formed a divine team of sorts with the maze god, as the two are often associated with one another, which yeah, would make sense. The water god's domain was not likely not only in water, but also in rivers, lakes, pools, springs, and the other water sources than the ocean. It's implied he may be either to save you or drown you or no in between, really hoping they establish which one that is. The water god appears in different forms of Olmec art, including large sculptures and small figurines and celts. It's possible that he is a forebearer of a later Mesoamerican water god. This brings us to number three, named the Feathered Serpent. The Feathered Serpent is shown as a rattlesnake, either coiled or slithering, with feathers on its head. Who could have saw that coming? Strangely, the Feathered Serpent isn't very common in surviving Olmec art. Later incarnations such as Ketsulku Watal among the Mexica or Kukolkin amongst the Maya seemingly had as much of an important place in religion and daily life, confusing the researchers and historians as in order for the deity to be passed along that far, it needed commonality. After all, these were spoken word societies. If they aren't depicting this being as much or stopped over time, why were the Olmecs still talking about it enough to spread the lore? Nevertheless, this common ancestor of the significant feathered serpents to come in Mesoamerican religion is considered important by early researchers and now. Early depictions of the feathered serpent in Mesoamerica have been widely distributed throughout the region, which can attest to the interaction between ancient people. The feathered serpent was associated with the sky, earth, and space due to its dual nature, a flightless being that could travel on water and land, and a soaring being that flew through the air. Some studies claim that this god was linked to religious and human sacrifice. Getting close to our last god, ooh, number two first though, and it will be the banded eye god. Next to nothing is known about the mysterious banded eye god, which is super unfair because it's the weirdest looking one and named one, so I want to know the most about it. The banded eye god appeared to be more humanoid than other Olmec gods and carries the popular Olmec feature of a cleft head and a downturned mouth. However, sometimes the banded eye god can be found with a wide open toothless grin. This god was named for the band or stripe that passes through and behind the god's almond shaped eyes and the circular iris, as depicted in one of the most famous Olmec statues, La Limas Monument. The banded eye god is considered to be a provider god, a deity of springtime and renewal who symbolizes reborn vegetation and is thought to be a precursor to Shipitotec in Mexica mythology, whose priests wore human skin, flayed from sacrificial victims as a sign of rebirth. As with all other Olmec gods, very little is known about the banded eye god. Historians and researchers are still studying available resources to determine the origin of other details. And what truly makes the banded eye god even more unique is that apart from the sculpture at La Limas, every other drawing and depiction of the deity is a side profile only. And now for the last of our eight gods, coming in at number one is the Were Jaguar. Save the coolest name for last, eh? So the Were Jaguar got a kind of chubby toddler body going on with feline features like fangs and cat slip pupils, but also the classic cleft head and some fire brows. Sometimes the god will be seen in a headdress, ear bars, or crossed bar icons. The Were Jaguar was highly regarded in pre-Columbian 
Colombian societies as a symbol of leadership. In addition, it was a patron god to the ruling elite who used the motif of the were jaguar to reinforce authority. However, this doesn't explain the nature of the were jaguar's design. For over half a century, scholars have been debating its possible origins. According to some researchers, the depiction of the were jaguar copulation on monuments, exactly what it sounds like, artwork of a jaguar getting down with a human lady, was merely the beginning or documentation of a cult or a representation of a conquest and battle, which sounds like a bunch of people grasping at straws, but anyways. Instead, the depiction of the explicit encounters between human and jaguars, experts see the animals as representations of perhaps aggressors like enemies. Another disagreement amongst researchers are whether the were jaguar and the rain spirit are actually two separate gods. Alrighty, thank you so much for tuning in to learn something new. I hope it was worth it and look forward to seeing you again. So be sure to like and subscribe to see more from us and until next time, comment down below what you think of these ancient gods. See any connections of your own? Thank you.